I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. The slow onset of the disaster was perhaps the most terrifying aspect of it all. It began subtly, with scattered news reports of a strange, aggressive flu spreading through remote villages in Eastern Europe. By the time the world's leading health organizations issued their first warnings, the infection had already taken root far more broadly than anyone had anticipated. The pathogen, a mutated strain of rabies that incubated rapidly and led to extreme violent behavior, was unlike anything seen before. Dr. Emily Ross, an epidemiologist, watched the situation evolve with growing alarm from her office at the CDC in Atlanta. The virus, which the media had begun to sensationalize as the Z-virus, had shown an uncanny ability to resist traditional treatments and vaccines. The infected, dubbed the afflicted, displayed not only heightened aggression, but also a disturbing resilience to physical damage, barring severe trauma or destruction to the brain. Emily's days became a blur of emergency meetings, research sessions, and grim updates. Reports of outbreaks in major cities across Europe and Asia led to widespread panic, with governments struggling to maintain order. Quarantine zones were established, but breaches were frequent and catastrophic. By the time the first case was confirmed in New York City, the U.S. government had declared a state of emergency. Emily was called to assist in a task force aimed at developing a protocol to deal with the domestic outbreak. The cities became battlegrounds, with law enforcement and military struggling to contain the afflicted, who were driven solely by a primal urge to attack and spread the infection. One evening, while reviewing data from new cases, Emily received a frantic call from a colleague at a New York hospital. The quarantine measures had failed, and the hospital was being overrun. Her colleague's last words, drowned out by screams and chaos in the background, were a plea for Emily to stay safe and to keep working on a solution. The next day, the CDC headquarters became a fortified shelter for its staff. The world outside was descending into chaos, with governments falling and society's structures collapsing under the strain. Despite the dire circumstances, Emily and her team continued their research, clinging to the hope of finding a weakness in the virus. One breakthrough came when they isolated a particular enzyme in the virus that could potentially be targeted by a drug compound. However, as they prepared for a trial, the power grid failed, plunging the lab into darkness. Backup generators kicked in, but the sense of security they had felt within the CDC's walls was shattered. Emily ventured into the darkened corridors to secure additional medical supplies from another lab. As she navigated through the emergency lighting, she heard the unmistakable sound of shuffling and groaning. The afflicted had somehow breached the perimeter. Her heart raced as she realized the CDC one of the last strongholds of order and hope, was compromised. Armed with only a flashlight and a fire axe, Emily moved stealthily, avoiding any unnecessary noise that might attract attention. She reached the supply room, quickly gathering what she needed, but as she turned to leave, the beam of her flashlight fell upon a group of the afflicted, stumbling down the corridor towards her. The story of Emily and the global struggle against the Z-virus was far from over. Trapped within the CDC, with her colleagues' lives in the balance and their potential cure within arm's reach, Emily faced the ultimate test of her resolve and ingenuity. The halls of the CDC had become as perilous as the world outside, and Emily needed to find a way to survive, not just for her own sake, but for all of humanity. Emily's mind raced as the afflicted lumbered toward her, their eyes vacant and limbs jerking unnaturally. The narrow hallway offered little room for maneuver, and the weight of the supplies in her arms hindered her mobility. Every instinct screamed for her to run, but the growling figures blocked her only route back to the safety of the lab. She quickly assessed her options. The corridor had several doors leading to other labs and offices, most of which would be locked, but if she could find one unlocked, she might have a chance to hide and wait out the danger. Setting the supplies down quietly, Emily gripped the handle of the fire axe more tightly, her knuckles whitening under the strain. With a deep, steadying breath, she prepared to defend herself if necessary. As the first of the afflicted drew near, Emily swung the door of the nearest lab open, relieved to find it unlocked. She slipped inside just as the creature reached for her, its fingers grazing her lab coat. Heart pounding, she shut the door with a soft click and locked it, her breaths quick and shallow as she listened to the thuds of bodies against the door. The creatures growled and scratched 
but the sturdy laboratory door held firm. Inside the lab, Emily scanned for another exit or a place to hide. The room was dark, illuminated only by the dim emergency lights that cast long shadows over the benches and equipment. Her eyes settled on a ventilation duct near the ceiling, a potential, though risky, escape route. But first, she needed to ensure it was viable. Climbing atop a sturdy table, Emily reached the vent, her fingers prying at the cover. It gave way with a metallic groan, revealing a narrow passage that was just big enough to crawl through. She knew the ducks would be a labyrinth, and getting lost in them could be just as fatal as facing the afflicted outside. However, staying in the lab was not an option. Sooner or later, they would find a way in. Emily quickly returned to the floor, gathering the medical supplies she had dropped. She stuffed them into her coat pockets and a small backpack she found in the lab, preparing to make her escape through the ducts. Just as she was about to climb back onto the table, the lab's phone rang, piercing the tense silence. Instinctively, she froze, then crept to the phone. Hello? Emily whispered into the receiver, her voice trembling. Dr. Ross? The voice on the other end was calm and authoritative, a stark contrast to the chaos around her. This is General Hargrove. We've established a secure line through the CDC's emergency system. We're coordinating an extraction for you and your team. The military has secured a perimeter outside. Are you able to move? Emily glanced back at the vent, then at the door where the scratching had intensified. I can move, but the main hallways are compromised. I'm planning to use the ventilation system to reach a safer location. Understood, the general replied. We'll guide you as best we can from here. Keep this line open. With the phone secured in her lab coat pocket, Emily climbed onto the table once more and hoisted herself into the vent. The duct was cramped and the metal was cold against her skin, but the promise of rescue drove her forward. As she crawled through the twisting pathways, the general's voice guided her, a lifeline in the suffocating darkness. The journey through the ducts was harrowing, with frequent stops to check the map the general provided against the layout she remembered. The sounds of the afflicted echoed below her, a constant reminder of the dangers she had escaped and those that still lurked ahead. As Emily made her way toward the designated extraction point, her thoughts lingered on the cure that could be humanity's only hope. The stakes were higher than ever, and her survival was now intertwined with the survival of humanity itself. The path ahead was fraught with peril, but turning back was not an option. Emily crawled through the dark, narrow ducts, each turn and dip a testament to her desperation. The metal beneath her was cold and unforgiving, pressing hard against her knees and palms. Her progress was slow, measured by the distant yet persistent moans and scratches of the afflicted below, which seemed to reverberate through the very framework of the building. The general's voice in her ear was a constant presence, guiding her through each segment of the ductwork. Turn left at the next junction, then straight until you reach section D4, he instructed, his voice a calm in the storm that raged silently around her. Emily followed his directions meticulously, aware that any mistake could lead her directly into danger. As she neared section D4, the air grew inexplicably colder, and a faint, unsettling smell of decay filtered through the vents. Her heart raced as she approached a grate that looked down into one of the secured labs, supposedly empty at this hour. Peering through the slats, Emily's blood froze. Below the lab was teeming with the afflicted. They milled about aimlessly, their movements jerky and unnatural. But what caught her breath was not their presence, it was their attention. All at once, as if sensing her gaze, they stopped and turned upward, their eyes, devoid of any human recognition, fixed on her location. Emily recoiled, her hand slipping, and she clattered against the side of the duct. The sound was like a dinner bell. The afflicted began to jump and claw at the walls, reaching toward the noise with a frenzied desperation. Keep moving, Dr. Ross, the general urged, his voice now edged with tension. You're close to the extraction point, just a little further. Heart pounding, Emily scrambled forward, the map momentarily forgotten as panic drove her. She could hear the metal beneath her groaning under the assault from the creatures below, the integrity of the ductwork now in question. Finally, she saw the marker the general had described, a large vent leading outside, secured with a heavy grill. Relief washed over her, quickly followed by determination. She reached for the grill, pulling at it with all her strength, but it barely budged. The grills bolted from the outside, Emily gasped into the phone, 
desperation creeping into her voice. Hold on, we're sending someone to assist, the general replied. But time was a luxury they didn't have. The duct behind her was beginning to bend under the weight of the afflicted. The metal twisted and tore, the sounds of the approaching horde growing louder. Emily pushed against the grill with renewed urgency, her fingers aching, her breaths coming in sharp gasps. Just as the grill finally gave way, the duct behind her burst open, hands, grotesque and grasping, reached through the gap. Emily screamed, kicking at the hands even as she pulled herself through the opening. She fell to the ground outside, tumbling into the mud as rain poured down, washing over her like a cruel baptism. Exhausted, covered in mud and blood, she looked up to see a military vehicle approaching, soldiers jumping out to secure the area. They rushed to her, pulling her to her feet and away from the gaping hole that had been her escape route. The afflicted's hands reached out from the darkness, grasping for anything, even as the soldiers fired, their shots echoing in the stormy night. Safe for the moment, Emily allowed herself to be led to the vehicle. As she climbed in, her last glance was towards the CDC building, its windows now glowing with the eerie light of the afflicted watching her departure. Their moans were drowned out by the roar of the engine as the vehicle sped away, but the haunting image of their silhouetted figures stayed with her, a grim reminder of the nightmare she had lived and the battle still to come. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 